All right, it's finally time to analyze some of these ED pills that are being sold all over the country in the gas stations. These are kind of sketchy gas station pills. I'm sure everybody's kind of seen these things. They got some of these crude names. Uh, so I was reached out to by Grant Harding here. He's like a pretty famous pharmacist YouTuber, 200,000 plus view, uh, subscribers. Uh, and he sent me two that he really suspects uh, are fake. They're basically just like Viagra or something like that, but he can't confirm it. So let's run through the mass spec and let's see if uh, the gas station ED pills are actually just like prescription uh, medications uh, under the guise of some sort of herbal supplements. Uh, actually, this one I was able to find here in, um, in Laguna Beach, and then these two Grant sent to me to analyze. So let's go ahead and take a look at these and uh, Sledenafil is just Viagra, but it's sold as a bunch. It's off patent, I think, so it's a bunch of different generic products that have it as well, including these Hims Viagra, and there's tons of these different products. However, these ones from the gas station are not supposed to have uh, the actual prescription medication in here. For all of these, they come in these like discreet, I guess, easy to put in your pocket capsule holders. So this is the plastic outer capsule, uh, and the inner pill is what we're going to be analyzing. Here we go, all the capsules opened, and the inner pill, you can see, kind of looks like that. Alright, so actually I'm going to open up the pill containers, the little capsules inside each of these plastic containers, and then just dip a little bit of the powder uh, into these Eppendorf tubes here. Uh, we'll try that first and see what we find. Um, if we need to dissolve the entire thing, uh, then we will, but uh, I bet it'll be a lot more work if I get that, that pill capsule uh, dissolved. All right, so we got samples one, two, and three. We're just going to cut off the tip of a pill. Let's see here with number one, with the razor blade, and then just dump a little bit of the contents of that, and then we'll have some leftover just in case we need to do it a different way. So you can see right away from one, it is a really brown, kind of not homogeneous looking powder. It's got some chunks in it. Let's take a look at two. So number two is completely different. It's like a white powder, very much pharmaceutical looking. Alright, so we got that. All right, number three is even the weirdest of them all. It's like actually like a solid black kind of pill shaped, completely solid chunk inside the red capsule. That's gross. That one's like very crispy. So I just chunked a ton, little bit off in there and I put it in the tube here. So now we got all three. The rest of this chunker in there. There we go. So we have some leftovers in case we have some leftovers in case we need it. And then here we go. We got one, two, and three. I mean, these are very different looking. These are very different looking samples. All right. So we're we're gonna extract these. I'm gonna use a 90%. I'm going high percentage acetonitrile. So none of that like cellulosic or anything weird. That should dissolve any drugs. Is my thought. I'm gonna do a blank for everything. So we got a nice controlled blank. Um, and so we're going to do 90% acetonitrile, 10% water for this first go at it. Alright, here we go. Oh my gosh. That solid chunky pill from the third one is like blue. Like super bright blue. Let's vortex all these guys. And then that is... What is that, like methylene blue or something in there? I don't know what that is. That's crazy blue. Alright, so we're going to let these guys sit. Maybe 15 minutes now. Let's give it a... I mean, that thing's like stuck to the bottom, so I'm gonna be like, uh, let's just leave that guy. And this one is definitely MCC, it's not soluble at all. So we're good there. And then the blue one, so blue now. This is the darkest thing I've ever seen. Beware of the blue pill, gross. All right, so now we're gonna take all three of these guys and we're gonna spin them out on the centrifuge. And then I think we'll go with like maybe a 20x dilution um, into water, spit them out again. Alright, off the fuge. One. Uh, looks like a big brown goo blob at the bottom. One. Sample number two. Looks like everything's on MCC, some sort of insoluble cellulosic. Should be easy. And now the one that I've been waiting for, the blue. That's so blue, it's almost black. All right, so here are the dilutions. I'm gonna spin these out again because when you dilute something in acetonitrile uh, into water, you can get it to be kind of cloudy and crash again. So that's, that's what happened there. And then this one, same thing. 
crashed out big time. And then this guy, super blue. We got like milky white blue, and then here's our blank. Blank is clear, clearly. So we're gonna spin these out again. Hopefully we get a clear solution. Alright, spinning it out one more time here. Both times did five minutes at 15,000 RPM. Alright, off the centrifuge for a second time. Hopefully they pelleted it out. That guy looks good. You can see the little pellet there. Alright, remember number two is cloudy. Okay, that kind of pelleted, you can see, to the side of the tube. I think we'll be able to get some clear sample from that. And then the final one here, the blue. Oh, that's a blank. That's definitely going to be... Blue is very soluble. Alright, samples look clear enough. Transferred in, one's definitely clear. Two, looking good. Three, super blue. Hopefully that doesn't mess things up. Um, and then the blank. Uh, here we go. All right, ran everything on the Zevo QTOF. This is untargeted metabolomics. We're running it out with what's called fast data-dependent acquisition, C18 column, regular 15-minute gradient. You can see if we look at my blank, there's some things in my blank. That's why you run a blank. And then, let's look at P1. That's the first pill we're looking at. There's a bunch of stuff. That could actually be, I don't know, we'll check those for real drugs. That could actually be what it says it is. Who knows? That's a lot of stuff. Could be a natural product. Let's skip over analyzing this one and go right to pill number two. You can see in pill number two, well, there's like literally just one big peak. I kind of overloaded it. That peak, clearly from the peak top, is it 475 and then you can see the exact mass there. If you search 475 into HMDB 475 2129 1 ppm error. Exactly what we thought it would be. We're hoping it wasn't, but that is sildenafil. That is prescription medication not allowed in over the counter. So I guess that's what I was being asked, and the pill number two, I can confirm, is basically just uh, over-the-counter Viagra. Boy, oh boy. You're not a good mass spectrometrist if you don't confirm fragment ion data, so that's what this is. That's the data-dependent acquisition MS2 data for 75.2. There are our fragments right there. Make this a little smaller so we can see it. So you can see we got fragmented uh, 311, 377, 283, and 99. So then we go over here. This is the HMDB database hit for Stenafil. I mean, it's only one ppm off. It's very unlikely it is anything else. We can come down here and we can look at the mass spec data in positive mode, which is the mode we're running in, off QTOF, 20 volts, positive mode. I'm doing a 15 to 45 volt ramp. Let's see what we got here. We got, they're saying 375. I'm seeing 377 and 375. They're saying 311. I'm seeing 311. They're saying 283. I'm seeing 283. They're saying 99. I'm seeing 99, 99. This is definitely it, guys. Multiple daughter ions matched. This is definitely Viagra. Uh, just over the counter. That's not good. So another thing I'm trying to figure out is in, I mean, this is basically just Viagra pill 2. There is another little peak there at 390, and that shows up looking like this. Let's try to figure out what that is, too. All right. Oh, man. So, you know, I was mentioning that there's that little peak at 390. So we searched that guy, HMDB 390, and it's hitting Tadafil. Very similar to the sound of the other one. That one is uh, Cialis, another ED drug. I mean, it's like both of the ED drugs. It's like a little bit of the long-lasting Cialis and a whole lot of Viagra. Um, that's crazy. I mean, over-the-counter, too. <laughs> that pill number two's crazy. All right, pill number three. These are the two sent to me from Grant. Uh, this one, again, we know that 475 peak. That is, again, just straight Viagra. Um, it looks a very similar to pill number two, which again, straight Viagra, but there's a different peak. So instead of the Cialis, like we're seeing in pill number two, 
We have a mass of 280 this time. And that 280 mass is clearly chlorinated because uh, of that larger third isotope. So let's go ahead and search that, figure out what that is. First hit again, my instrument is super accurate. It is hitting this, which does have a chlorine. Subitramine, I don't know what that is. Let's consult the Google. That is a drug to treat obesity. Sold under the brand name Meridia. Uh, it is a SNRI, a serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. I bet you this makes you like feel like something, I don't know. Uh, interesting. Why are we putting that in there? So that's like really the only difference. If we look at these two uh, things that Grant sent me here, we got both of them with a ton of Viagra. And then we got Cialis, or we have Subitramine is the other additive in this one. So they're slightly different, but basically I'm assuming the effect is the same. Crazy stuff. Man, I think Grant's gotta send me some more pills to analyze.